Hello everyone! My name is Abigail Miner. You may know me from my birding series, Birding with Abigail, on YouTube. I'm here in my back patio here in El Paso, Texas, and I'm really excited to talk to you about how to attract hummingbirds to your own backyard and why you should. If you have any comments or questions, please save those uh, in the comments and I'll get to them at the end of the program. They can be in English or in Spanish. Me pueden preguntar cualquier cosa en español. I will be speaking uh, in English for the presentation though. I do want to acknowledge the Tiwa Isleta del Sur Pueblo tribe with whom we share this land, as well as the many peoples who uh, have come before here in El Paso. Now let's take a moment and I'd like you to think about the way that you feel when you see a hummingbird. You can always close your eyes and really imagine the beauty of online is I can't see you and neither can anyone else so you don't have to feel embarrassed. And go ahead and write anything in the chat uh, that you're inspired to say about those feelings or about a particular experience you've had. When I've asked this question in the past, people have said, I feel like something magical has happened, or I feel as if I've been chosen. Personally, I feel like I've seen a real live fairy. Hummingbirds are just so beautiful and colorful. They're so interesting in the way that they move and fly. They're just inherently uh, fascinating. And not only are they cute, hummingbirds are tiny but tough. And they play an incredibly crucial role in the ecosystem. And we'll talk about what that looks like. Now, as we said, hummingbirds are tiny. They are the smallest birds in the whole world. They can weigh less than a penny. And their eggs can be as small as peas. They're incredibly resourceful nest builders. I know of someone here in El Paso who has a set of string lights on their patio, and yes, a hummingbird is building a nest on those string lights. The nest is the size of a ping pong ball. Now, they may be small, but they are tough. Hummingbirds can fly as fast as 45 miles per hour. They can fly backwards, and they're the only kind of bird that can do that. They also migrate up to 3,000 miles in the case of the black-chinned hummingbirds that breed here in El Paso. So they can spend the winters as far south as Guerrero in Mexico and as far north as southern Canada. It would take you 51 hours to drive that far. I recently made a drive from Dallas to El Paso, which is nine hours, and that was enough for me. And hummingbirds don't have podcasts or music or anyone else to uh, take a turn driving. Now, not only are they tough uh, and strong flyers, they also can withstand very cold temperatures. They can go into a state of torpor uh, in order to slow their breathing rate, slow their heart rate, and can live in temperatures as low as 45 degrees when it gets cold here in the mountains at night, as you know about. Not only are they tough, they're also not to be messed with. So hummingbirds uh, will defend their territory and food sources to the death. There have been studies where researchers have watched one hummingbird make as many as 40 chases in a single hour to stop other hummingbirds from getting at that food source so that nobody else could drink that nectar but him. Now, if you grew up in a big family, maybe mealtimes were a little like that for you. My dad's one of six siblings, and he makes it sound a, a bit similar when he thinks back on his childhood around the dinner table. Now, not only are hummingbirds adorable, tiny, and tough, they also act as critical pollinators for the ecosystem and for us. Now, what's a pollinator? If you already know, go ahead and make a quick comment in the, in the chat. Pollinators are uh, animals that drink nectar, bees and butterflies are other examples, and that also carry pollen on their bodies from flower to flower. Um, and birds, like hummingbirds, uh, are part of this mutually beneficial relationship with plants where they need each other to survive. They're, they're an important part of our environment and our food sources. One in three bites of food rely on pollinators. If you think about 
fruits and vegetables and even meats that eat fruits and vegetables. Pollinators made that happen. That adds up to as much as $217 billion globally with a B in, uh, in income and revenue in the agricultural industry. I used to be a tour guide at an apple orchard in Illinois and pollination was so important to the owners and farmers there that they kept bees on site, another really important pollinator, and they included pollination in the tours that, that we would all give at every single tour. Uh, they thought that that was so important that everyone who came to the orchard should know about it and appreciate that role of pollination in our food. Unfortunately, a lot of pollinators are at risk right now, including hummingbirds. Two of the species that pass through El Paso during migration, the Calio hummingbird and the Rufus hummingbird, our friend right here, are in decline right now, which means their numbers are, are uh, getting lower. They are suffering from habitat and food loss. And so everything that we can do to, to help them is necessary. Fortunately, there's a lot we can do. Uh, every food source is critical for hummingbirds who can eat up to 48 times a day since they're so small they need energy constantly and the best thing you can do to support them and bring them into your own backyard is to plant or take care of native plants. Now native plants are those that evolved here in, in the area that we are. That means they're well adapted to the rainfall levels that we get, to the soil and uh, an air that we have here. This uh, native plant is a Mexican acanthus. It was recommended to me by the El Paso Audubon group, who I reached out to for suggestions of, of a plant that hummingbirds would like. It has red tubular flowers that hummingbirds will be drawn to. Um, and the beauty of native plants is they require very little water, which is great because it doesn't rain a lot here and water is an important resource. And they do very well in this climate, which means they will not require a lot of attention from me, which is great because I do not have a great track record with plants. So if you're like me and not, not super well versed in, in growing things, native plants are great for you too. And bonus, they're going to attract more pollinators like butterflies and bees. Now, the second thing that you could do to support hummingbirds in your own backyard is to set up a, bird, uh, a hummingbird feeder. You may have one of these or have seen one of these in a store, and they're super easy. All you need to do is fill this with a mixture of uh, sugar and water. You can do this right at home. I used plain old white cane sugar. This is what you want to use. Not honey, not brown sugar, not powdered sugar, and just dissolve that with hot water. I heated that up in a kettle uh, at a ratio of one to four. One part sugar to four parts water. And then all you have to do is stir it together and let it cool so that you don't burn your baby hummingbird's tongues. And uh, then you can fill it in the hummingbird feeder. It's easy, it's cheap. I already had these things in the kitchen and this is the safest feeder liquid that you can use. It's safer than anything that you're gonna buy in a store. Please don't add any red food coloring. Um, even though hummingbirds might like red things, they are made to drink red food dye. And the nectar that they drink from flowers is clear too. So that's the best thing for them. It's the safest thing for them. I hope that you will be inspired to do what you can for the hummingbirds in your backyard. You'll enjoy them. And we know that they will do wonderful things for us. They're tiny, but they're tough. And hummingbirds play a crucial role in our ecosystem, locally and globally. We need them, the plants here need them, our food needs them. They're just awesome. If you have any more questions and comments, I hope that you'll leave them in the uh, chat and I'll be happy to stick around to answer them. I've had so much fun talking to you. Thank you so much for joining me. I can't wait to talk to you again soon.